uh, my gut was an issue in the sense I used to get headaches. By the end of the evening, I realized I used to get light headaches. And that was because of the gut issue. And I realized that the gut was the cause of all the problems there was. There was something that wasn't suiting. Dairy products was uh, were a problem because lactose was the problem. Do you problem. consume sugar at all? Yes, I do because I don't believe in anything else. Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palneapan Manikam. My friend Sarno Kumar wants to become like a Bollywood hero. He watched this video on Sunil Shetty's diet and he wants to follow it exactly so that he becomes like Sunil Shetty. Hi. I said, wait a second, let me just review the diet and then tell you all the good things and bad things. Let's dive deep into it. It, it, it. It's the quantifying of the food. Normally for me at home, it's a, it's, it's a four egg, uh, egg white because I don't like the yellow. Egg white is a wonderful source of protein. Each egg white provides 3.5 grams of protein with only 17 calories. Low calorie high protein food is an excellent source during the weight loss journey. Thank God he said that he did not eat the egg yolk because he did not like it. I have seen many people saying eating egg yolk will increase cholesterol level. This is not a generalized statement. This is absolutely not true. In general, one egg per day is an excellent source of protein, excellent source of good cholesterol. What I I did during my weight loss journey was one egg and four egg whites on a daily basis. My friend Sarana Kumar takes the egg yolk out and keeps right away on my plate as if he's pulling out the bomb trigger and says it contains too much cholesterol. I said this one little egg yolk is not going to trigger your time bomb in your belly. Things like allergy tests and not eat of what you're I allergic do. to? Of course I do. Okay. Because uh, like we said, how he realized what works for him doesn't work for me, you know. Uh, my gut was an issue in the sense I used to get headaches. By the end of the evening, I realized I used to get light headaches. And that was because of the gut issue. And I realized that the gut was the cause of all the problems there was. There was something that wasn't suiting me. And over a period of time, I learned, you know, as as things improved here and we started getting better at allergy. When I say something like gut is the most important part of your body, nobody listens. But when Sunil Shetty says everybody is listening very closely to make the people believe us, all doctors should be movie stars. My patient Aran Kisami is saying it is possible because doctors collect more than the movies. Here and we started getting better at allergy tests and more precise and accurate. I realized that gluten is something that never worked for me. Probably because I came from a background that, that spoke about rice more than wheat, you know, and uh, I had to go back to my roots. And, and that, that brought about a big change. He's saying that he did some allergic testing and found out that he's allergic to gluten. Let's just dissect that a little bit more. When a person is truly allergic to gluten of all kinds, they might have a condition called celiac disease. This is a genetic disorder which happens in patients who have a problem with the gene called HLA-DR3-DQ2. Whenever they eat gluten of any kind, they get abdominal pain, discomfort, diarrhea, bloating, constipation. The GI symptoms can be anything. Thing. They should be on a strict gluten-free diet and they should not be exposed to gluten even in their dreams. Previously, celiac disease was thought to affect only Caucasian Europeans but recent study in the US showed that it can also affect Americans from the Punjab region of India. These are the patients who are truly allergic to gluten but fortunately this is not that common. The most common type of patient that I see in my practice is patients with irritable bowel syndrome. Given the increasing stress, eating alcohol, processed food, lack of sleep, no physical activity predisposes them to an increased risk of irritable bowel syndrome. These patients cannot handle gluten as well, similar to celiac disease patients, but not because they don't have any genes, but they are sensitive to a component called fructans. Their gut is very sensitive to this component, which is also available in all gluten containing products. That's why they get better when they go on gluten free diet as well. But the trend what I'm seeing right now is people are going on gluten and free even without any problem at all because they want to optimize their health going gluten free is extremely expensive very cumbersome i do not recommend to any normal people at all it is not going to optimize your health my patient aragasami said he may have irritable bubble syndrome despite eating gluten free food i asked what do you eat he says i ate sheshwang fried rice with chili sauce and he was very irritable because the server did not provide a Additional sauce. Oh, that irritable. Ah. So please don't fall for the gluten free hack. It is not for everybody. Dairy, dairy doesn't suit me too much. 
uh, more so when uh, when when you talk about uh, the casein and uh, uh, you know other things in, in, in the product. So, it, like uh, gluten, uh, dairy products was uh, were a problem because lactose was the problem. So when I switched to uh, lactose-free milk, it worked for me in small quantities. So for me, food is is probably. Three or four eggs. The other major problem most of my patients with irritable bowel syndrome has is lactose intolerance. They cannot digest milk or milk related products at all. When they drink milk, they get bloating, they get flatulence, they get abdominal pain and diarrhea. So when you drink milk, the lactose in the milk gets divided into glucose and galactose by an enzyme called lactase that is available on the border of the intestines. What happens is after two to three years of age, when we are weaning off of breast milk, this lactase activity goes down significantly especially in Asians and Africans. That's why you might have seen people who have tolerated milk related products very well for the first 25 years of age starting to have some GI problems after drinking milk after 25 years of age. In Americans research show that lactase can persist into late adulthood as well so lactose intolerance might not be that common. The other common reason that patient might not digest milk is again coming back to the same irritable bubble syndrome where their gut is extremely sensitive and because of poor lifestyle choices their gut might be filled with so much bad bacteria leading to a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. When you have more bad bacteria in the gut compared to good gut bacteria lactose intolerance can happen as well. Coming back to Sunil Shetty let's see what we can learn from his experience. I don't know exactly what happened but my educated guess is I don't think he has true celiac disease. I strongly suspect he must have had irritable bowel syndrome. He entered the cine industry at the age of 31 in 1992. I read Wikipedia. Irritable bowel syndrome is extremely common in patients who are working night shifts, who are not following the circadian rhythm. It is extremely common in doctors and healthcare professionals where we don't take care of our health first because we are taking care of the patient's health first. Again, due to poor lifestyle choices, the bad bacteria slowly gets accumulated in the gut. So you will start having symptoms whenever you eat gluten, whenever you eat milk. That might be the initial manifestation of IBS. Maybe Sunil Shetty's sleep was not good when he came into the cine industry. Maybe he didn't have time to eat good food because he was working so hard. I don't know. But most commonly, he must have had IBS. And that is why when he went gluten-free and dairy-free, his symptoms got better. I see a trend here that people buy A2 milk, people buy all these costly milk thinking that it is healthy for them. If you don't have have any problems at all when drinking milk you don't necessarily have to choose all these optimizing milk that is not going to add any extra benefit to you but if you are a person who is having allergic symptoms who is having GI symptoms when you drink milk lactose free milk or A2 milk or any other alternative milk you could try it out all the cine actors are shooting late at night not having enough good sleep undeveloped some kind of irritable bowel syndrome and they become lactose intolerant but all the fans are pouring milk milk on their banners. What an irony. In small quantities. So for me, food is, is probably three or four eggs in the morning, uh, typical uh, gluten-free toast or bread that, that I have. Again, it's quantified. I, mean, I quantify my food. I make sure uh, what my activity for the week is and then accordingly uh, play with with, with the quantity. That's a very important point, quantifying. That is the other phrase of moderation. People keep saying moderation and keep eating everything. If you drink one cup of soda, is that going to cause cancer? No. But along with that one cup of soda, what are the other things that you are taking on that given day? That is what quantifying and moderation means. My friend Sarana Kumar eats one gulab jamun, one rasagulla, one milkshake, one dairy milk and says he is in moderation. I understand that he's a celebrity. He has all the time in the world, all the money in the world to quantify his food, to classify his macros of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. However, that does not mean that we cannot adopt the same. We can adopt even at a micro level. Slow and steady understanding of how much protein is going inside our body, how much carbs are we eating, how much amount of physical activity are we doing for the week. All this will help you understand your body 
better. If you become aware and start noticing the body changes, your body will tell you what you need. That is the beauty of our body. It is a slow process. It is a painful process. If you put the hard work now, the long-term investment is absolutely amazing. My patient Aro Kisami understands his body very well. He knows that his heart is 75% blocked. His liver is 50% fatty. His diabetes is only 25% control and physical exercises 0%. Do you consume sugar at all? Yes, I do because I don't believe in anything else. I don't believe in the substitute for sugar. Mm. Uh, for me, it's either my fruit or my sugar. I like a cup of tea because it gives me the right, you know, it makes me feel mm. good. Uh, one cup in the morning and one cup in the evening. But I, once again, it's probably five to six grams of sugar. It's like no sugar at all, but still gets, get, gets me going. And what I like to do, I continue to do because it works for me. So before this video, I just know Sunil Shetty as an actor. But after this point, I have become a complete fan of him because what you like to do, you should do because that is where sustainability comes through. People say sugar is bad, carbs are bad, don't eat sugar. That is not true. Limited amounts of sugar, if that happens, helps you encourage your weight loss journey you need to stick to it that is what i did as well i added that one spoon of sugar in my tea because i enjoyed my tea completely so that i can use my willpower for something else careful thinking and mindful eating people use splenda stevia all these artificial sweeteners and natural plant-based sweeteners and i'm not sure whether you guys have appreciated the taste of the coffee or the tea with this artificial sweetener the taste is not the same as the sugar so you just have to figure out which one you like. My friend Saruna Kumar said to his wife Thirubhra Sundari, from today, I'm going to cut down on the sugar. So just add one teaspoon of sugar in his tea. But after tasting it, without her knowledge, he adds so much sugar by himself that even honeybee will get diabetes. And then generally seven o'clock, I finish dinner uh, and make sure my gut is, gut is right because then I need, like he says, you know, he needs to walk after he's eaten or he's had a drink. I feel I need, I need to be active after dinner. Could be for half an hour, but I'd walk around. I'd stand like Mukesh says, I'll always walk. I thought I became his fan. I just realized that he is a subscriber of our channel as well. He doesn't need anything after 7 p.m. as well. But remember the point that he mentioned that his gut felt better. That is what I keep mentioning in the channel that your gut needs time to take rest. Minimum of 12 hours. So we shouldn't keep feeding the gut. The gut is not your gutter. And the fact that he is active after a meal is a very, very critical step. Multiple studies have shown that just after a meal, if you just walk a little bit light intensity walking, it helps to control your blood sugar levels significantly. When people went for a short walk, their blood glucose level rose and fell gradually rather than an increased spike. My Bengali friend Abhiji Chakramboti goes for a walk every time after a meal. He walks from the dining table to the kitchen to find for sweets. People walk after a meal to decrease the blood sugar level he is walking to raise his blood sugar level. So I told my friends, I don't know Kumar, that he can become like Sunil Shetty if he doesn't eat anything after 7 p.m., if he works out, if he walks after a meal, if he quantifies his carbs, protein and fat every week and if he pre-plans the meal the next week, he said, I don't want to be like Sunil Shetty, I'll be like Saravana Kumar itself. Please let me know in the comment section which point that you will be able to incorporate in your lifestyle. Remember, one belly at a time, it is absolutely important. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.